Hey, what's going on, everyone? Bass here. So in a recent turn of events, the Packers are cutting linebacker Jalen Smith just after signing him a few weeks ago after the Dallas Cowboys had released him. They signed him on October 7th. Jalen Smith only playing in two games for the Packers. I believe only 27 total snaps on defense. Uh, just hasn't really looked good at all. So now today the Packers are cutting him. Now, if we go back to that signing, the Packers did sign him to that one-year deal worth only $770,000 because the Dallas Cowboys were paying most of his salary. So it was kind of a low-risk signing to begin with. The Packers weren't, weren't really giving up much at all. So that's why I wasn't really worried if this were to happen, if Jalen Smith weren't or to work out like that is happening now. And you could really kind of predict this was coming after he was a healthy scratch last Thursday against the Arizona Cardinals. Whenever a player plays a couple games and then is a healthy scratch after that, um, definitely means <laughs> the Packers saw something that they do not want to see anymore. They do not want you on the field at all. Usually after that, a player is either cut or traded. And another thing that contributed to him being a healthy scratch on Thursday and probably being cut was the fact that Jalen Smith just didn't play special teams. He couldn't play special teams. He never really did in his career at all. Um, and then the other linebackers on the Packers, uh, Chris Barnes, Oren Burks, and Ty Summers, they can all play special teams. So they, at this point, hold more value than Jalen Smith. Now, in his two games and 27 total snaps for the Packers, Jalen Smith had two total pressures, only one tackle with one missed. Um, he allowed three receptions on three targets for 29 yards. And even though it was only two games, he was actually the second lowest graded PFF player on the Packers defense right above Ty Summers. Now, again, this is with no snap restriction. So this is only in 27 snaps, but he was still the second lowest graded player all year, technically for the Packers with a 34.8 overall grade, 45.8 run defense grade, 28.6 tackle grade, 62.0 pass rush grade, and a 38.9 coverage grade, which would put him that overall grade of 34.8 would put him at 153rd out of a total of 172 linebackers in the NFL. So you could say he just was flat out awful. He just didn't play good at all. The few times I did see him, it didn't look good. The only time he had a semi-decent play was and which still ended up in a touchdown was the pressure on, uh, I believe, Taylor Heineke, which ended up a deep touchdown to Terry McLaurin. Um, I thought Jalen Smith should add that sack, uh, just didn't finish it. But that was the only positive play, even though it was still a negative play. So that kind of summarizes the play of Jalen Smith in Green Bay. But like I said, it was just a low risk signing. Um, there was a potential for a high reward, you know, only paying him $770,000. We've seen what Jalen Smith was earlier in his career. We've seen how he was at Notre Dame. If you're only going to pay a guy $770,000 and really not all of that, because you only cut him after two active games, um, there's really no risk there. And the fact that he didn't work out is a shame, but it's not hurting the Packers any more than if they hadn't signed him if that makes sense. And I'm going to be completely honest, I was on the train that I thought he would turn it around a little bit. I mean, he hasn't looked great in Dallas this year, but if you go back to his previous years, and I know that's going back to previous years, but he looked good in Dallas in previous years. He was always a good tackler. He was pretty damn good in coverage. It just didn't work out. He just looked really lost out there in the two games for Green Bay. Now, Chris Barnes and Oren Burks haven't looked that good at all this year. It's pretty much Devondre Campbell than everyone else. And Jalen Smith was just thawed man out. Obviously, a lot to do with that was definitely special teams. But Chris Barnes, being the second string linebacker, has some awful tape out there this year. I mean, he has not looked good at all. Definitely a lot worse than he was last year. This could also mean Green Bay might bring in another linebacker, whether that through the trade deadline today or a free agent. Now, this could also be clearing up room for a, a, a trade for another position. Obviously, the Packers need a third running back. They need a tight end. They could even trade for a cornerback, a defensive lineman. There's a lot of positions that the Packers could make moves today. And as the hours tick, tick down, um, we might see a move happen. But that about does it for this video. I just wanted to update you guys on the news about Jalen Smith. You know, a shame. Hopefully, he can you know land somewhere and maybe get some playing time or whatever. Hopefully, he can you know revive his career somewhere else, but just didn't work out here in Green Bay. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, did you expect this? Did you really have no high hopes for Jalen Smith? Or were you like me, kind of had you know the hope that he could turn into what he was um, earlier on in his career? But on that note, I'll catch you on the next one. As always, go Pack Go.